Okay, we're back live in uh, Orlando, Florida for SAP 2012. This is the on-the-ground coverage of SiliconANGLE, the Cube. The, they're closing the show floor. You can hear that in the background. Uh, Bill McDermott just gave a speech. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. And, John, we uh, we heard McDermott. He was on message. He was, um, as Bill always says, he was well coiffed, looking sharp, you know, a very handsome guy, really, you know, passionate about what he's doing. But it was really it was staged on the stage. You wouldn't expect anything less in front of seventeen thousand people. We're going to have uh, Alex Williams come on, and we're going to talk about kind of what we heard in the keynote. We were all kind of down there. He's uh, in the house, Alex Williams. Hey, hey guys. Hey, hey Alex. Alex. Uh, How are you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> First of all, the opening video was awesome. Oh. Yeah. I the mean, sound system is amazing. Was great. Yeah. The opening video I think it was, was better than the NAB cube with the the cube we had at NAB, yeah. which was a great sound system. But this one, I think, blew it away. Yeah, I think so, Dave. <laughs> but the video was fantastic. And Bill McDermott's intro was kind of like very pesky, very actor. He's like, it felt like he was on stage. Yeah. Like, uh, on a, like a Shakespearean. You look like Clinton out there, you know, <laughs> like with the good hair, of course. Yeah, yeah. The, the, Clinton, the commentator uh, was making a lot of hair coming. But it sounded like a cube interview. All the talking points <laughs> yeah, were like mobile, transformation, consumerization of IT. Yeah. What did you think of the keynote, Alex? I, I think it was one of the best customer events I've ever been to. I think primarily because of the talk show format and the professionalism that they that they really took to a new level compared to last year. And they had kind of a funny kind of a oh, interview style that they tried to do with Bill McDermott. But this year, I mean, we got to see Coinstar, Ace Hardware, and Burberry talk about how they re how their businesses are really changing, how they're really being affected by data. And I, I thought their examples were great. Yeah, really interesting. I, I, I thought I think it's critical that SAP demonstrates some proof points beyond its core supply chain business, and it's yeah. clearly trying to do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Ace is sort of the, yeah. you know, the 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 classic. But the yeah. examples that they were using, you know, were all about hey, we know everything about the customer and business analytics. Um, I, I think though, John, you said it's like a cube interview. I think the difference is that when you had McDermott on, you got him talking about Oracle. Right, he wasn't mentioning the competition. Oh, it's totally there, right? You can see mm -hmm. the um, different camera angles. They had yeah. the, the crane, and they also had the guy with all the, the camera. You can see the notes. She had all the notes. You know, I mean, she's a talk show. Yeah, oh, it was well she produced. Was totally yeah. produced. It was not. But hopefully, we can get him on the cube and, and you know ask him some of the, the questions that our audience is more interested in. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I heard we're going to get McDermott on the cube. So folks watching out there, uh, McDermott Schnabe are certainly going to come on. Oliver Boosman told me in, in the audience I saw him. Right. Had a quick word with him. He's definitely coming on. Right. Uh, but I did you know see them um, and in the crowd, and they said yeah, thumbs up. So we'll see tomorrow or Wednesday the, the CEOs in there. But I thought the presentation was fantastic. And my, I just love the language that they're using. I love the fact that they recognize that there's so much disruption. I love the fact that it's like one consumer now. That is huge for them. I mean, for any enterprise to say one consumer essentially really is a, is a good message. What are some of the underlying themes, Dave, that you heard out of that keynote? I mean, uh, one of the things I heard was uh, was was kind of like the uh, – Kind of the the transformation of uh, of the database in many ways, where I mean, we, we were McDermott at one point, you know, said we can help you with your with your relational database issues. Yeah, well, you know, which was really <laughs> really a code for like we're we're after you. Oracle. To me, to me, Alex, three <laughs> things stood out. Um, McDermott said he talked about uh, speed, yeah, simplicity, yeah. and personalization. Now, those are three things that are not normally associated with SAP, uh -huh. and so so clearly. McDermott and company are trying to transform the messaging, the company, and you know, that's really the, the emphasis is they got a lot of a lot of dough, they got a lot of resources to make it happen. The other thing was 197,000 customers. That's a big number. I hadn't heard he, that before. He broke things down into in little chunks. So my first chunk was the the things that I the, the key highlights for me, Alex, were consumer revolution. He mentioned that point. Macro forces are converging. We're talking about the society and the social connectivity were three kind of clumped together. Things. Intimate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. oh, no, really uh, intense, intense social connectivity. I like the selection. selection. He had, it was very Clinton. It was, more, it was more sophisticated, too. It wasn't <laughs> just about Twitter or Facebook. It was about kind of this new, the, you know, this new world where it's everywhere. It's part of the business process. We need to think differently. As the Burberry exec said, she said, you know, you know, when I grew up, to succeed, you need to speak English. For this younger generation to succeed, you need to speak social. And I thought that was, a, you know, a, a good way of putting it, where, like, you know, it is all in this little device, and that's where IT is right now. Yeah, and it's, it's some real actual use cases of social. You, we used to hear about, you know, so enterprise social and 
sort of behind the firewall social. This is, you know, really trying to connect social with revenue generation. The other thing, um, Dave, that I thought was cool is that he said that consumers are in charge. That was a direct quote. I love that. Yeah, he, he really emphasized totally that. totally driving it. We've always said on theCUBE here, the consumers are driving the change in the enterprise. That's coming from the consumer, not from us. That is the social network. That is the mode. And, and it wasn't the Facebook hype. It was, no. it was legitimate productivity message. Uh, he also mentioned innovation cycles are shrinking. Sustainable competitive advantage. He took the best of the hipster hype social mobile cloud and turned it into enterprise language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. Uh, yeah. He, he didn't, he, he's not a big joke teller, but he did say kind of tongue-in-cheek early on, if you're in the 18 to 25 sector, you're more likely to have a, a smartphone than you are a job. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, catching some of the times, uh, he had a lot of questions from the interviewer about the economy. He's obviously bullish on the economy. Um, mm -hmm. you know, let's face it, you know, but neither of those individuals are struggling. He, but brought you know. up, he also brought up the business model thing, which I thought another one, hit another mark there. He said reinventing business models is a critical board level conversation everywhere it goes. But then he highlighted that with a point by saying, um, thinking from the end consumer in, not from company to the consumer. And that was a really nuanced, he, it was a nuance that was kind of highlights the fact that the business model of the future is about consumer first and engineering it back into the company operations, not the other way around, which was the IT practice. Right. That is the consumerization of IT, and the disruptive business model aspect Again, validates our points over the past two years. And you, and you can, I'm sorry, you, you, right. you can see it on the shore, show floor too. I mean, look at the presence that mobile has on the show floor. It's gigantic. I, I do and think, I mean, we, we go to enterprise shows, we go to EMC World, we're at Citrix Synergy, we're at Oracle Open World, and you know, n numerous others. I think that SAP definitely takes that message, John, that you were talking about just now, the, from the consumer you know, in, not the other way around, more serious than any other company we, we follow. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think, well this year the messaging grew a tighter around, again, the language around business, with, around this trend data. The, last year was different. They were put a stake in the ground. Last year to me was stake in the ground, cloud mobile social with a real mobile database feed and mobile message. This year it's going to be about the apps, it's going to be about the productivity with the business model. So you know, I do think that they're leading the way and I think you know, like we were talking about earlier about Citrix, how there's a huge difference between companies like Citrix and SAP, but yet so similar. Both have active online communities, but SAP is just dwarfs Citrix in terms of relevance. I mean, I felt this year at Synergy as an example that Citrix was just, they had all the elements, it was just kind of like blah. It wasn't popping, it wasn't like wow. It was that they had virtualization, they had cloud, they had all these things, it was, you know, it was cool. But it wasn't, I didn't fall out of my chair. Here, with <coughs> McDermott's showmanship, Schnabe's product focus and kind of their, their execution, it makes you go, wow, I like these guys. They're, they're marching in the right yeah, direction. I, I tweeted, I, 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 you do like McDermott. He's very personable. Yeah. I mean, you'd buy from him. You yeah, know, yeah. you'd buy from that guy. Now, last year, as you recall, I mean, it's almost like we had to force big data onto them because we're, you know, you, you tweeted back and we're usually ahead of the trends at Silicon Angle, and it's, and it's true. We were talking about big data all the time. McDermott, I think, mentioned it once yeah. last year in his keynote. He probably said it at least 10 times. He showed the dashboard year. off, and that was pretty much big data. And again, that was a highlight for the folks out there who didn't see the keynote. I tried to get a picture, but I couldn't get the resolution with the phone. But he was showing an, an iPad demo, and it was really fantastic. And that is the kind of dashboard that I think executives want to run their business. That's a big data application. That is analytics. That's the speed of data. Data, that's HANA, that's everything that you know, Alex, Alex wrote a post this week about that. So that, that's big data. The one thing I think that, that ne I think we need to watch with SAP is there is a little, there is, there is, there is like kind of like this like hero complex that's a, that we're seeing with HANA. And it's important, I think, to look at what, what's underlying. What do you mean by that? Well, I think, you know, it was developed by Hasso, right? You know, and so Hasso came in and he, and he developed this technology. And he has his own team. You know, so they are very kind of a separate organization internally. There's there's the threat that in memory could become commoditized to some extent, but there's also the concern. You know, if you like it, look at for instance like how they're going to bring Hana to the cloud, and you know how are they developing their apps in a Hana environment in a configured environment versus what they're doing with the ABAP platform as a service and the Java platform as a service. And so, I, I think you know the the messaging was great. I think that the uh, the truth will be told in the details. Well, I mean, there's, there's some stuff. Jeff Kelly was on earlier, and, and he was saying that, that uh, SAP did 160 million euro 
in last year in, in Honda revenue, which mm -hmm. is about um, north of 225, maybe 250 million. Yeah. So that's pretty substantial. That's he, substantial. He felt like it could double this year or more. So they're, you know, two or three years, you're talking about a billion dollar company, yep. you know, a billion dollar component of the company. Yep. That's, a qu you know, with SAP's multiple, you know, five to seven billion dollars in market cap right there around H right. HANA, and it could grow so substantially higher than that. I think this is where success factors is really going to be um, interesting in how it can further help with this synergy. Because if, if, if Lars can bring together a team, and it looks like he's doing that, it looks like Samir Patel is working directly under Lars, and Samir is someone I really respect. They're developing kind of this real kind of cloud up mentality. And that is going to be really important if they are really going to move into, and you know, into really the forefront of technology innovation. They're, they're partnering with Amazon Web Services. So how much do you know about success factors? So they pay three point four billion. Yeah. Right? And mm -hmm. success factors, my understanding is it's it's relatively narrow around talent management. Yeah. And SAP's got its own sort of core HR management right. that's look two stovepipes. Now right. they got a challenge in bringing those things together. We saw how long it took Oracle, you know, with its fusion apps, about six years to bring those apps. Now Oracle's a lot more complicated situation here, but but what do you know about that? Um, do, you, do, you ha do you have any you know, intelligence or sense yeah. as to how that's going? Does it need to be integrated? You know, SAP Core HR doesn't have uh, self-service, success factors does. It seems to me it was, it was a cloud play, essentially. Yeah, well, let's start with the people first, with Lars in particular, and the impression that Lars has had on SAP internally. He is shaking things up. He is, you know, if, you see, if you've seen Lars in action, he runs on the stage, he yells, and he throws his fists in the air, and he says, sales, 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 sales. And that's, ha that's been a little bit disruptive to SAP with his conservative culture. But what... He, what well, it sounds like Hasso. Yeah, well, what, <laughs> but that, what, that, what that has allowed it to do, what that does, it provides some, you know, some disruption in the company, but it also gives him kind of a foundation where he can work upon. I think it's interesting if you can look at SAP, if they can build a collaborative platform with social as a, you know, kind of a key component and integrate other apps like Streamworks into it. And they're starting to do that. You're st for instance, Streamworks now has collaborative analytics integrated into it. And it'll then have HANA be able to pull that, pu push information into that as well. And if you can start building that into like, you know, in, into like, into the success factors, environment, then you might have something pretty powerful. And if they can create that unifying underlayer, that will be helpful. But but it's really complicated to understand and decipher what the actual SAP cloud strategy really yeah, is. Yeah, so you see that as more strategic. So you know, compare that to, for instance, what a, what a Workday is doing. I mean, they're just, you know, selling, right? I mean, it's a cloud app. Yeah. They got they got core HR and they've got the, they got the, great mobile the, the talent management and the mobile apps. Mm -hmm. It's all, all mm -hmm. there. And they're selling today. Now, not that success factors isn't, but it's more narrow. That, so yeah, and that's where the I think that's where the cultural shift will be really critical because the the issue that I that I'm hearing that SCP has right now is around how they treat developers, right? And like the developer quotient, the, um, the developer factor is critical here because they need to be able to just kind of push out this technology so people can develop it. What they've done is, in some respects, they started cannibalizing existing mobile technology they developed. That, that was developed under um, under John Wookie, who uh, left the company to go to SAP, and he had developed actually some really really beautiful, innovative applications. But what? Sorry, John Wookie left to go to to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Salesforce to oh Salesforce. Right, right, and now right. and now and last week it was just announced that he will be leading all mobile development at Salesforce.com. He did some really interesting stuff, you know, here at SAP. He he developed the you know kind of these on-demand apps, you know, that were looking really 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 sharp but he left and 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 the dip, and, and still there's kind of this question about okay well w what is that what is that direction with the o with those mobile apps how will they treat developers are they going to be able to create a platform that developers can work upon at a nominal cost to simplify the licensing they can start to really get those things in shape and they're making progress or then I think they'll you know you, you'll see some, uh, some some impact so what are you looking for in the next couple of days Alex uh, well, tomorrow we'll, we'll hear about cloud, uh, you know, and, and how, and I think we'll hear more um, how uh, uh, cloud will fit in with uh, success factors. 
we'll also hear, you know, more about mobile, you know, and like, and I think we'll talk about that mobile app developer landscape. I think we'll hear more about how they fit with companies like, you know, how they fit with Amazon Web Services. It was really interesting to hear in one of the in one of the sessions today that one of the mobile executives uh, talk about Amazon Web Services, and he was like, rah, 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 Amazon Web Services. And, you know, and you think about it, SAP's in a kind of a good situation. You know, they can choose to go with Amazon Web Services. They can go with that, you know, kind of that very kind of lightweight kind of cloud environment as opposed, you know, they're not a systems company, right? They're, they're, they're purely a software and services company. So I think we'll hear more about, you know, about that kind of that advance in thinking. So are you, are you uh, for instance, we compare that with sort of Oracle strategy, with the Oracle public cloud, sort of uh, on, on the whole thing. John, you were mentioned earlier, Workday, Vishal Sikha was sort of trashing Workday, talking yeah. about, you know, they're, well, I mean, they're building their own. Well, I mean, like he didn't and know, and then all of a sudden he went on mm -hmm. to collaborate on object store. I don't know what they were do using. We heard from the, uh, SAP Ventures that it's custom database, so we kind of knew that. Yeah, so are you saying, Alex, that, that SAP strategy is different? They're not going to try to own that whole cloud, I believe, cloud uh, infrastructure? That, that They're seems just going to outsource that yeah. and focus yeah. on the application yeah. layer? Mm -hmm. And that might have some downside to it. but So much different than Salesforce and right. Oracle and Workday and a lot of the other SaaS vendors. Is that uh, right? Or I think, I think I, you know, I make a delineation with between Oracle and uh, and. SAP as an Oracle really is a systems company. They uh -huh. sell the hardware and the software. IBM sells the hardware and the software. Salesforce is they're still pretty much for pure app developer. Yeah. And and it, and that really I think gives them some some added you know some uh, some advantage. Now you could say that you know well actually you know uh, they could be boxed out because you know companies like Oracle and IBM they're really focusing on data center consolidation and they can you know and they can control the enterprise that way. I'm not so sure. Well, I think Salesforce that they're is kicking butt. Yeah, right? yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I think they're banking. I think well. they're trying to bank on innovation. And you know what? You know, and I think a good anecdote example of that is in how they've adopted uh, iPads and mobile devices internally at SAP. I did an interview with Oliver Boostman about about a month or two ago, and they have more iPads being used internally with other mobile devices than. Than, than any other company in the, in the world except for one telecom company that in was Korea. Cool, uh, McDermott talking about Steve Jobs yeah. called them. So it's in a bit. Personally, so, yeah. said, "What are you doing?" And you know, why it doesn't have a printer? It doesn't have you know? Yeah, and, you know, so. we're sports yeah. fans, right? You know, like what makes a great great team? Well, they build internally, right? I mean, you have a good team internally, and then a good farm system, good farm and system, and, good and I think that's that, that that's encouraging to hear from SAP. Good. All right, well, we're here at uh, Sapphire Now 2012. We're in Orlando. Uh, we're here with Alex Williams and uh, my co-host, John Furry. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. You know, now's a good time probably to mention. Uh, you got you got questions. A lot of this terminology might be new to you. Uh, go to Wikibon.org. Go to SiliconAngle.com. Check out Services Angle. Uh, check out DevOps Angle, our new site, SiliconAngle.tv. These are, these are resources. Everything we have on there is made available for free. You got questions? Hopefully we have answers. Tweet yeah, us. And, and also, you know, Alice Williams is, is uh, our main guy for the enterprise. Been covering SAP for years, IBM, all the top dogs in the enterprise. But really, we have two sites you want to look at, uh, DevOps Angle for developers, um, and also Services Angle for more of the business side, CIO. And Alice uh, works and contributes and manages the team to, to do those sites as well. Um, Jeff Kelly and Ricky Bond, we're all, we're all over those areas. And, and we're excited to be at SAP Sapphire for the third straight Fun. year. Independent coverage, and we would not be possible to bring our teams here and our engineers, Marcus and Hopkins, Kean and others, if it wasn't for the generous underwriting support of SAP and EMC. Those guys have supported us for three years and allow us to expand our mission and our vision, and I want to thank those guys. So, yeah. so Dave, just uh, final comments before we go off. Uh, any uh, any, any uh, things yeah, you're looking well forward to? Tomorrow and tomorrow's going to be a packed day, eight hours. Yeah, I mean, this, this is a C-level show, and I, and I love to talk to the customers who come on and hear about what they're doing. I mean, they really talk about their business challenges and how they're driving revenue, and, you know, it's a different mindset. A lot of suits here at this event. Um, you know, sometimes they're a little buttoned down, but, uh, but it's serious business here. And so looking forward to more of that action tomorrow. Alex, anything that uh, you're looking forward to? Oh, I'm just excited to, to, to hear the keynote tomorrow. I especially want to hear what Lars has to say. I think that's going to be pretty uh, pretty entertaining. Okay, we'll have the wall-to-wall -wall coverage. You're going to be seeing it on siliconangle.tv. 
And this is the key of our flagship telecast. We go out to the event and take our team and go into the hallways. We find the stories. If we can't have them here inside the cube, we'll go out and get the top stories here at SAP Sapphire in Orlando. We'll see you tomorrow.